Now, before I start with this video, I want to make something abundantly clear. There is a big difference between a teacher who is harsh on your art versus a teacher who is failing you because they hate you or are abusing or mistreating you. In fact, if you are being abused by a teacher in any way, then you need to report it to someone. That is not okay and it should not be happening. I myself have been victim to an insanely neglectful teacher who gave up on me because of my ADHD and left me at the mercy of my classmates. I am primarily calling out the art YouTubers who think that they shouldn't listen to their teachers because the teacher in question is jealous that the YouTuber is a better artist than their teacher and make themselves out to be the victim. With that out of the way, let's move on to the video. Stop me if you heard this one before. An art really YouTuber releases a video about their art teacher and then proceeds to cry and whine about how their art teacher would not let them draw anime or do whatever they want. They then proceed to make accusations that the teacher in question was going after them and they were secretly trying to fail them. And they also tend to confess that they deliberately disobeyed the teacher's assignment and that explains why they failed, but they refuse to take responsibility and instead point fingers because it's a lot easier to do than swallowing your pride. There's been an ever-raging debate as to why art teachers are so mean to them. They don't like anime and they want you to do something else. They eviscerate your artwork and don't give praise. In reality, your art teacher is not mean to you. They may be harsh, but criticizing someone is not even close to, say, having an art teacher that will sneer at your art, calling it garbage, and then telling you to simply give up on art altogether. I really don't blame artists for conflating criticism and hatred. Artists have personal attachments to their work, and that criticism can be mistaken as an attack on them. However, pushing out criticism is not going to help you. Yeah, it sucks listening to how your latest masterpiece has flaws, but it's there to help you in the long run. Think of it as free guides on how to improve your art. Of course, there's a big difference between constructive criticism and just needlessly being an asshole. The point of art class is to get you out of your comfort zone. That's why art teachers want you to do something else and focus on the curriculum that they're teaching. If you are ever considering being an artist, especially in the professional industry, you need to experiment. There's only so many times you can draw the same anime cat girl before you stagnate on your art. Experimenting not only helps with trying new mediums and learning new skills, but it can also beef up your portfolio. It can show studios that you're capable of doing different mediums. That is infinitely more appealing to a studio than someone whose portfolio consists of only anime characters. There will be people in the comments that will say, but our teacher should be supportive. They shouldn't be shunning their kids for having a different art style. And to that I say, that's not how it works. Art teachers are not going to coddle you and kiss your ass because you have an art style. They want to see if you can really learn the fundamentals of art and apply it to your work. Using excuses like, this is only my style, is not going to fly in art class. If anything, you're handicapping yourself by shutting out valuable information. Speaking of art styles... We go back, we relax, hentai in the back. Anime has been generally seen as an art form, and I agree with that sentiment. To say that anime hasn't influenced the West in some way would be a lie. Take a look at shows like Avatar The Last Airbender and Kappa Mikey, for example. If anime is an art form, then why does my art teacher hate anime? There are a few answers as to why. For starters, art teachers are required to follow a curriculum. That curriculum could cover things like art theory, art history, or even the fundamentals of art itself like perspective and color theory. However, anime is not covered because it's not important to the curriculum. Why? The answer varies, but the consent seems to be the following. 1. Anime is new in the West, and what I mean is that Anime didn't influence the West until the mid to late 90s when we experienced a phenomenon called the anime boom. To summarize, the anime boom was a phenomenon in which many anime series were being imported and dubbed to Western audiences. Anime has been the West's eye for the past 20 years, and that's new for art history. 2. Many art teachers, not all of them mind you, 
tend to be older and as a result may have not been exposed to anime the exact same way we did. And that's not going into the fact that many see anime as a childish thing by virtue of it being a cartoon. Of course, anime isn't just restricted to kids, hentai does exist, but the stigma still stands. Also, have you guys seen some of the weird shit that comes from anime? Number three, they just don't care or like anime. What? Sometimes the answer is simple. Occam's Razor. Anime has a... uniform look. When looking at other artists that teachers discuss in their curriculum, you can tell that the artists in question have an identifiable trait. A style, if you will. For example, Frida Kahlo is best known for her self-portraits. Monet has a lot of pictures surrounding nature. Picasso is Picasso. But when you show some art of anime, it looks like this, this, and this. Of course, that's not to say that there isn't stylized anime. It does exist through Studio Ghibli films, Akira, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Junji Ito, etc. However, a lot of anime has the same look. And for many watchers like us, we're able to differentiate which is which, but for an outsider, that's easier said than done. Let's be real here, anime is not anatomically correct. What are those? When an art teacher sees a student drawing anime, they know they're gonna have to properly teach them anatomy and to wean off anime for a bit. Learning about anatomy is essential as an artist. Once you have learned and mastered anatomy, you can then develop an art style. There's a saying that goes, you need to learn the rules before you can break them. I suppose I can't blame art YouTubers for embellishing their stories surrounding their art teachers. It does make views and a lot of young artists relate to having a hard ass art teacher. It's in a way hurting a lot of learning artists. They don't want to learn from their art teachers out of fear that they'll be yelled at or be mistreated. As a result, these artists don't get the necessary information they need to improve on their art. Think of your favorite artist. They weren't born with the skills that they had. It had to be taught to them and they had to apply it to their artwork. Teachers, especially in the art department, work a very thankless job. They spend 8 plus hours dealing with kids that in general don't care about them and the curriculum. They prepare lectures, grade papers, and have lives outside of school and they wind up being disrespected. Oh, and on top of that, they also get paid pretty low wages and they are expected to pay for supplies when the school should be funding that instead of wasting their money on sports. This is America. The least you can do is listen to the teacher and follow their assignments. I get it. Drawing fruit is boring, but it teaches you valuable things such as lighting, shading, and proportions. Your art teacher does not hate you. They want to help you, and sometimes that involves being a hard ass and saying you shouldn't be drawing anime. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this one and want to see more, consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.